Hakim is on his way to work. The 21-year-old is a mechanic at a major company, and this is his new car, bought in March. But between just May and June, his car was stopped and searched four times. He says this is life driving whilst black. Every time I get pulled over, I feel angry and I feel scared because these are the people that should be here to protect us. And I'm, I'm, I'm in fear of them because I don't know what can happen. And I feel angry because I've been in my work uniform heading to work. Like, I have no previous record. My car is not marked for nothing. I've never been involved in no gang violence or nothing. And they're pulling me over, telling me that there's gang activity in the area, which has nothing to do with me. These are some of the videos of Hakeem being pulled over. He says these interactions have increased since the lockdown started. That's when he got his new car. Stops like this are fueling anger. At the start of each situation, I've always been calm to an extent. But then they, like say the last situation, the, the fourth time I've been pulled over, the policeman, he was literally about 30 centimetres away from my face. And his excuse for pulling me over was for leaving my indicator on. He then proceeds to take out his handcuffs and, and cuff me. So I've been, I've been calm, but only after I've been handcuffed, I've then, I've then lost my temper in a way. The incident was captured. Look, look, on my way to work, don't touch me. Don't stay two minutes away from me, don't touch me. Uncomfortable scenes like this are increasingly going viral online. This stop in West London was by the Special Territorial Support Group, who specialise in public order. The unit were also behind this stop on the weekend. Whoa, wait, 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 he didn't do anything! The young couple in this car are two high-flying athletes. Bianca Williams is the European and Commonwealth champion. Her partner here, Ricardo de Santos, is the Portuguese 400-metre record holder. They were handcuffed outside their home in West London when they returned home from training with their three-month-old baby. I feel like we were targeted because Ricardo was black um, and had a nice car. I'm sure if it was, you know, a white person, that wouldn't have that wouldn't have been the issue. So there's definitely, they need to definitely re-evaluate re um, the system and because something, something's going wrong and it's not right and it's not nice to, to live in fear. We bought two new cars. We went from a Nissan Duke to a BMW and then, then we bought a, uh, a this Mercedes-Benz. And from then we became, well, I became a suspect from. Look at this, look at this. I'm outside my house. Look at this. The police searched their car for drugs and weapons. The police told them they smelt cannabis. But being athletes, they don't smoke and are regularly tested. The police search uncovered nothing. These incidents have raised major concerns over how the police are using their powers and who they use them against. According to the government's own figures, stop and search is disproportionately used against black people. For every thousand white people, there are four stop and search incidents a year. But for black people, that number is 38. That is almost 10 times the rate for white people. And this has had an impact on the overrepresentation of black people held in the criminal justice system. These two athletes say the government's new commission into racial inequality should consider over-policing and they plan to take legal action. 21-year-old Hakeem has already filed a complaint, which he shared exclusively with Channel 4 News. We now understand the voluntary referral has been made by the Met to the Independent Office for Police Conduct. The Met also said they were content there were no misconduct issues with the stop on the weekend and carried out proactive patrols. In other words, they're doing their job. Some say that's the heart of the problem. Well, the Metropolitan Police did provide us with a statement on this case, but when we asked if a senior officer could be interviewed about it, they told us nobody was available to speak to us. But Victor Elisa, the Metropolitan Police's former head of diversity and a former borough commander in Tottenham, joins us from Godalming in Surrey. And the barrister, Abimbola Johnson, is in South London. Victor Elisa first. Poli the police are absolutely satisfied they acted properly, but what do you make of the video footage of Bianca Williams and her partner? Well, the, the video, like most of these videos you get on social media, you only get a snippet of it, so we can only comment on what we see. And it does look um, quite forceful. You know, you've got a police officer there with his baton um, pulled out and ready to, to use. Um, and when you read the bits about the context, which I have done on, on, in the newspaper in the sense of he was driving erratically on the wrong side of the road and you see the female officer saying, we're going to search you for a section one for weapons. There's certainly enough officers there to, to not 
view that to, to not see that level of, of force being used mm. and I guess the thing that really concerns me when you listen to that clip you know a number of these young men who've been stopped kept saying I'm afraid of the police I'm not sure what they're going to do we're in the UK if that kind of language was being used by people in America then we would think okay that's right. a bit disturbing that's, we're in the UK and we shouldn't be hearing that kind of language being used by people right. who are going to be well, stopped by the police force. Abenbola Johnson, how widespread is that fear? How widespread is the kind of incident we witnessed in Simeon's piece there? When we look at the statistics, I think it's quite clear that uh, black people and Asian people as well are disproportionately stopped, are disproportionately interfered with by the police. And I think that what we need to be very clear about is that stop and search is a very often a quite a physical interaction with the police. So if you've grown up in an environment where a disproportionate number of your peers are stopped and searched, where they are physically handled, where you have had that happen to you at a school age, you will grow up and you will feel as though the police are people who will intrude your personal space, who may take you into custody at the last minute without you being able to notify people until you get to custody and so on. And so, so it is an intimidating space to, to live in, I think. So should stop and search be reviewed urgently, do you think, the, the use of it? I, I definitely think so. I think if you reach a point where you can see that it's having a disproportionate effect on specific members of the community, then something is obviously going wrong. Let me and put that... Let me just put that point to Victor Elisa. Do you think that stop and search should be urgently reviewed? So, interestingly, um, before I answer that question, interestingly, when I was working in the stop and search unit in the Met in 2010, um, a person was supported to take out a judicial review of the Met's use of Section 60. And we fought that judicial review and defended it successfully. So the notion of people reviewing the use of stop and search is not a new one. But when we get into a position where we're seeing repeatedly stop and search is really concerning to the public, stop and search is concerning to the people who have been stopped, I think at the very least there should be an internal discussion within the Met and an explanation to the people of Londoners as to how this tactic is being used that's causing so much concern to Londoners. Black, white, different ages, different social class, it's just causing disproportionate concern and it needs to be addressed at the leadership level, not at the individual operational level on the street. Abimbola Johnson, why do you think that black people are overrepresented in the criminal justice system? Is there any other cause than straightforward, ugly racism? Um, to be perfectly frank, I think that we have to, to, to be honest about this, there is racial discrimination uh, which permeates through the system. We see it not just at policing levels, but we see it in terms of the number of people that find themselves before the court, the number of people who are on gang intelligence data and so on. There's criticism um, very regularly. It's written down. We've seen it in reports from the Scarman report in 1981, the McPherson report in 1999, all the way through to say, the David Lammy review in 2017. So I don't think that we can ignore the fact that there is an issue around racial discrimination within the criminal justice system. And until we take ownership of that, we're not going to make progress. It's quite disappointing, for example, to see how slow the government has been to implement the recommendations within the David Lammy review and the other various reviews which have been passed through government and which have been done so with a lot of public money. The fact that we have a 2017 report which is re repeating many of the same observations that we saw in 1981 just shows how slow the progress has been. So there definitely needs to be an acknowledgement that there is racial discrimination within the criminal justice system, within policing, and that needs to be attacked and handled straight on. Victor, Elisa? I'd just like to add to that, when we're talking specifically about stop and search, 2014, the government issued a good stop and search guidance that forces could use. Now, the content of that good stop and search guidance means that stop and search can be carried out in a fair way that people see that it's proportionate and doing the very things that we want to do. So there are guidance plentiful for police forces to use to stop stop and search being seen as such a divisive issue. Okay. Don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm a supporter of stop and search, but if it keeps getting you for keep seeing these videos that's really disturbing, then the police are leaving themselves in a really vulnerable position where they're going to have the powers challenged.